Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Aracor Therapeutics PLC investor presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen only mode. Questions are encouraged and can be submitted at any time via the Q&A tab. It's just situated on the right hand corner of your screen. Please just simply type in your questions at any time and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, all questions will be reviewed with responses published on the Investor Meet company platform where it is appropriate to do so. Before we begin, I would like to submit the following poll, and if you could give that your kind attention, I'm sure the company would be most grateful. And I'd now like to hand over to CEO Sarah Howe. Good morning. Good morning. Um, good morning, everybody. So uh, my name is Sarah Howell and I'm the CEO of Aracor Therapeutics and I'm joined today by Susan Lowther, our CFO. And today really we'll be talking you through our acquisition of Tetris Pharma, really the strategic rationale for that and um, our mission and vision moving forward. So I draw your attention to our customary legal notice. So just by way of introduction, just a little bit of background mm -hmm. on Aracor. Um, so Aracor is very much focused on transforming patient care by enhancing existing therapeutic medicines so that they're safer, more effective and easier to use. And we do this by taking existing medicines that are already on the market and applying our innovative and proprietary formulation technology platform, Aristat, to develop enhanced versions of these medicines and we're very much focused on um, patient need and improving patient care and outcomes. We have ourselves an internal proprietary portfolio of best-in-class products focused within diabetes and specialty hospital care and since our IPO which was last June now we've generated best-in-class clinical data for um, one of our lead diabetes products, AT278, which is a ultra concentrated rapid acting insulin. And also we're well advanced now in our second clinical study for um, AT247, which is our ultra rapid acting insulin. And we're very much looking forward to reporting headline results from that study later this year. And we do continue to expand our revenue generating technology partnerships. This is where we partner with leading biotech and pharmaceutical companies. And we were recently able to announce a further partnership with the top five global pharmaceutical company, which really validates the strength and the need for the Aristat technology platform. So um, moving on to Tetris Pharma, Tetris Pharma are a revenue generating commercial stage specialty pharmaceutical company. They've built um, sales, marketing and distribution expertise and a platform to sell and distribute niche injectable products across the UK and Europe. They are revenue generating today from commercial product sales and we see significant upside potential from their lead licensed diabetes product, Agluo. And I'll talk about um, Agluo in much more detail shortly. Um, in terms of the terms of the deal, there are Aracor shares at completion and up to a further four million pounds, either in shares or um, cash at Aracor's discretion of deferred consideration, which are based on success-based earnouts over three years, which Susan will talk about in more detail. And um, there's two million pounds for initial Agluo inventory. So this is stock of that very exciting product and um, payment of one-off liabilities and also a further 4 million here for working capital really to support Tetris Pharma and that important rollout of the Bluo. So looking at Tetris Pharma in a little bit more detail, as I mentioned, they're a revenue generating commercial stage specialty pharmaceutical company. And we very much see the significant upside potential from their lead diabetes product, Agluo. So Agluo is a stable liquid ready to use glucagon product that's indicated for treatment of severe hypoglycemia in people with diabetes. And it's an emergency um, medicine in this case. The product itself is patent protected out until at least 2035. That's very important to our core as we're working on enhancing existing medicines and IP protection is core to Aracor's licensing model. 
Um, Tetris Pharma have entered into an exclusive license and supply agreement um, with Xeris Pharmaceuticals to sell and distribute a gluo across the UK and Europe. Um, there and it's important to note at this time that upon um, the trans completion of the transaction, that some amended terms have come into effect. There, essentially, the terms of that agreement at a high level is a, at least a 16-year term. It's linked to um, patent protection. There'll be a mid-single-digit royalty payable to Xeris Pharma on net revenues, and there are one-time commercial milestones that are linked to exceeding certain net revenue triggers and targets within a single calendar year. Now, Tetris Pharma themselves have launched the product in the UK earlier this year, and we can talk about um, that in more detail. And now the plan moving forward is to um, accelerate the launch across key EU territories over the next 12 to 24 months. So we're very excited um, with the team that's coming across from Tetris Pharma and now part of the Aracor group. They have a very experienced team in terms of sales, marketing, distribution there. So regulatory, quality, manufacturing, pharmacovigilance, everything that's required to manage this infrastructure and platform across the UK and Europe. And they also engage a flexible contract sales organisation um, for sales in the individual territories and um, countries there. So it's a very capital efficient model as well. And the team themselves have a proven track record in sales and distribution and marketing across the UK and Europe. So overall for Aracle, we see this very much as a commercial value generation opportunity here and the significant potential revenues from the sale of that key product, a Gluo, and also, and I'll talk about this in more detail, future potential to leverage this infrastructure and expertise to expand um, the commercial product portfolio now across the enlarged group. So if we just look at um, the combined portfolio now, of the company. So um, if we start with the um, Tetris Pharma um, products here. So as I've mentioned, the first and uh, lead products is a Gluo, which is a ready to use um, glucagon pen for the treatment of severe hypoglycemia. So this is very much a fit um, with Aracor, both in the perspective that it's a um, key product for treatment of people with diabetes, particularly those that take insulin, they're at the highest risk here of having a severe hypoglycemic event. So this is very much the same target patient population as um, we're targeting with our um, best in class insulin products, AT247 and AT278. It's also important to note that it's a ready to use um, product so it can be used very um, effectively at point of care. So this is very much aligned to our specialty hospital franchise and our strategy here, where we're taking products that are used within the hospital setting and are lyophilized or in powder form that require this complex mixing procedure prior to use. And we're using the Aristat technology to develop stable liquid, ready to use or ready to administer versions of these products. So in addition to a Gluo, Tetris Pharma also have nine um, sales and distribution agreements for niche um, specialty products. Um, here And again, we see very much a fit with Aracor specialty hospital portfolio that this same expertise and sales, marketing and distribution infrastructure could be used um, to sell and distribute Aracor specialty hospital products um, within those territories. I think it's important to know. It's also here that our strategy for our lead diabetes products, AT247 and AT278, remains unchanged in that we um, plan to generate further clinical data that further demonstrates the superiority of these products and also to generate a data package to position these products for partnering. And here we see the optimum value generation here to partner with a, a leading um, pharma company so that we can target market share within that very large existing $6.4 billion um, marketplace. So perhaps moving on and looking at a little bit more holistically at the combined company here. So um, with Aracor Therapeutics, we, of course, bring an innovative and proprietary formulation technology platform, Aristat, that we use to enhance the properties of existing therapeutic medicines. We have our best in class products. 
um, in development currently that we plan to develop to a higher value inflection point prior to partnering. And we're very much focused on specialty hospital care and diabetes, which is also a key focus for Tetris Pharma. Aracor is revenue generating from our partnerships with leading pharmaceutical and biotech companies and also the licenses that we have um, in place today where we've licensed either our technology or um, products that we've developed within the specialty hospital um, space. For example, our two co-development and licensing deals with HICMA pharmaceuticals. Now with Tetris, um, this also brings, of course, that focus on specialty hospital care and diabetes, but also an acceleration opportunity for revenue generating. They're revenue generating from commercial sales today. And as we've talked about, we see significant opportunity for acceleration there with the rollout of, of Bluo and being a key product. We also bring, of course, that um, commercial sales distribution and operational expertise to the table that can be further leveraged now across um, the combined group to add further products um, where that makes sense to this expertise and infrastructure. So again, we look at that combined company rationale in a little bit more detail. You know, first and foremost, um, we believe that Gluo is a great product. Um, it um, meets an important medical and patient need. It's obviously um, there for patients with diabetes, which is a key um, therapeutic area of focus for Aracor and very much fits with our mission to transform patient care by enhancing existing therapeutic medicines so that they're safer, more effective and easy to use. We also see very much a strategic fit here with Aracor's specialty hospital franchise and Tetris Pharma's expertise in specialty hospital sales and distribution here, and really gives us optionality for our in-house proprietary specialty hospital products moving forward. So for example, if we were looking to partner with a pharmaceutical company whose primary focus was the US market, then we could retain rights for the UK and Europe, which of course we could have done prior to the acquisition, but um, we would have limited options there to realise the value of those rights. Now we could realise that value by um, selling and distributing those products ourselves across the UK and Europe. It also gives us leverage really in that deal making to ensure that where we do enter into um, broader, more global partnerships, that um, the value of those markets um, is taken into account and to make sure that our partners are, are appropriately motivated to launch in all territories. So this doesn't mean we're going to take all of our specialty hospital um, products and um, sell them ourselves, but it is that optionality um, to do so. Also, as I've mentioned, it's very much complementary team skills and expertise and quite frankly, you know, ambition and um, vision here. So for neither company, you know, this isn't a an exit for the um, Tetris team here. It's really part of that um, strategy and vision to build a global self-sustaining biopharmaceutical company. We believe combined that we're in a better position to do that. And it clearly brings skills and expertise now across the whole life life cycle of product development through to um, commercialization there. Clearly with the Gluo being um, a lead and important product within Tetris Pharma portfolio, this is very much a diabetes product. So we have shared expertise and networks across key opinion leaders, patient groups and payers, which will be complementary both to the rollout of the Gluo, but also for AT247 and AT278, Aracor's lead diabetes products. And we'd anticipate a positive cash flow contribution from Tetris Pharma. And of course, this positive cash contribution can then be reinvested into um, value driving opportunities across the group. So now maybe to talk a little bit more detail around um, the product, a gluo. So as I mentioned, it's a stable liquid ready to use glucagon product that's indicated for the treatment of severe hypoglycemia. So severe hypoglycemia is dangerously low um, blood sugar here. And it's also characterized by the fact that the individual themselves is unable to treat themselves. So they need to have glucagon administered. Glucagon is the only treatment for this condition and by a third party. It might be a friend, a family member or um, simply a, a stranger in the street. So um, a product that's easy to use here is key. 
Now, across um, the UK and Europe, the standard of care currently is something called a glucogen hypo kit from Novo Nordis, which you can see in the orange box here. And this contains a um, vial of glucagon that's a powder that requires reconstitution prior to use. And um, it requires the user to um, go through a complex eight step administration procedure for the administration of the glucogen hyper kit. Whereas a Gluo offers another alternative to patients here. It's a ready to use glucagon in an auto injector pen, which you can see on the right hand side here. And to administer this product, it's a simple two step administration procedure where you simply remove the red cap and press the pen against the skin and push and hold down the yellow button for five seconds. So um, straightforward to use. And in a study performed by Xeris um, Pharma, which um, on their product Gvoke, which is the equivalent to a gluo in the US and Xeris Pharmaceuticals have launched this product in the US, they found that there was a 99% success, percent success rate in the administration of um, glucagon um, using the auto-injected pen, and that was in people with diabetes. So if we look as well, it's important to look across, of course, the competitive um, landscape for the product. So a glue, it, a glue itself is launched, as I mentioned earlier, in the UK. And in the UK, it's competing with the glucogen um, kit. So this is the lyophilized kit that requires um, the reconstitution procedure. So we think there's a significant opportunity here um, to gain market share and, and offer an alternative um, product to patients within the UK. And then across Europe, um, a gluo will be um, competing with both the glucogen kit and also a, another ready to use glucagon product from Eli Lilly, which is a nasal product. Now, of course, um, there'll be some inherent patient preferences between um, nasal products and injectables. Some will prefer a nasal, some will prefer an injectable product, bearing in mind that these patients are used to injecting um, insulin daily also. So there will be those inherent pre preferences that exist. And we can, to a certain extent, look to the US where these same products are competing um, in the US for um, comparison there, where we can see um, Xeris Pharmaceuticals gaining market share with the GVOC um, products there. And, and then for a Gluo, there are some um, additional advantages. It has a slightly broader indication. It's indicated for use from the ages of two years upwards. Um, it has very um, good shelf life stability and room temperature stability, um, which is important here because um, we'd expect um, patients to be carrying one of these pens or, or the Lily um, ready to use nasal around with them. So that room temperature stability is important. There is a fourth product that um, is on this slide, and I think it's important to, to mention, although it isn't, um, it hasn't been filed for approval in the UK or Europe at this stage. So isn't a competitor within the marketplace at this stage. Um, it's a um, glucagon analog. So it's a novel glucagon from um, Zealand Pharmaceuticals called Zeculog. So, of course, we will um, be keeping an eye out for any developments there. So if we move on to looking at the market opportunity for glucagon. So firstly, um, for glucagon um, is clinically appropriate. A, pr a prescription for um, glucagon would be clinically relevant for um, anybody with diabetes who's taking insulin. So if we look at the total potential addressable market opportunity, so if we look at the number of people with um, type 1 and type 2 diabetes who um, are treated with insulin in the US, this is around 6.8 million people in across the licensed territory, which is the European Economic Area, UK and Switzerland, it's around 5 million people. Now, if we assume that if you take a prescription of glucagon on, you take um, two units, so two pens, for example, one to carry around with you, one to have um, somewhere safe um, where your sort of primary third party caregiver knows where it is in the fridge, at school, um, um, uh, or you know, at home. And also, if we take the price per unit of glucagon for ready to use glucagon units and times that by the total number of units, it leads you to a total potential market opportunity across the licensed territory for a gluo of up to $1 billion. 
Now, the fact is today that not everybody who would be clinically appropriate for a glucagon prescription takes that glucagon prescription. So it's important to really hone in now to the, the actual market numbers currently and that opportunity for growth. So if we start with um, the U.S. market, and the reason to look at the U.S. market here is the competitive environment for glucagon is the same as it um, will be across um, across Europe in that there's a lyophilized um, rescue kit. There's Baxemi, which is Eli Lilly's um, nasal ready to use glucagon and Gvoke, which is the equivalent to um, a gluo in the U.S. that's been launched by Xeris themselves. And what we can see from the US that since the introduction of ready to use glucagons, that there's a year on year increase in the conversion of patients and prescriptions to the ready to use product format. So this is a combination of Baxemi and Gvoke. And back in May of this year, around 65 percent of the prescriptions so of the glucagon market had moved across to ready to use product formats. So showing that switch across and that prescriber and patient preference for these um, formats of glucagon. And what you can also see if you look at the bar charts on the right hand side is that since the ready to use glucagons have been available, that the total number of prescriptions per year is also increasing. So we're seeing that increase in market growth. And then honing into the GVOC experience in the US, um, as you can see, and this is Xeris Pharmaceuticals um, numbers here, that we can see that since they launched at the back end of 2019, again, they're seeing a quarter on quarter growth in the number of prescriptions of um, GVOC. And they saw a significant uplift in GVOC sales post the relaxation of the COVID um, restrictions in the US. I assume that was um, due to then um, their sales um, representatives be, being able to go out and talk to the prescribers and patients and key opinion leaders here. So then if we look at the market opportunity for a gluo, so this is across the licensed territory here, we estimate this to be um, around 100 um, million pounds market opportunity based on 2021 actual numbers of prescriptions. And how we've calculated this is that there are around 1.65 million units of glucagon prescribed in 2021. And if we take the premium pricing of glucagon, and I'll come back to that this in more detail, and multiply that by the 1.65 million units, it gives you a 2021 market value of up to around 100 million pounds. Um, so it's important to note here, again, that a gluo is patent protected out until at least 2035. That's important because it prevents generic entry, which we know can lead to um, price erosion here. And as we've seen from the US, there is a there's an opportunity here where as these ready to use glucagons are available, that you see an increase in the total number of prescriptions and then a potential increase in the value of that existing 100 million pounds market. And then if we look at the experience to date, so um, a, a gluo was made available by Tetris um, Pharma back in December 21 and has been more actively marketed from um, quarter one of this year. So as you can see again from the bar chart on the right hand side, um, Tetris Pharma have seen a month on month increase in the number of prescriptions of a gluo. And if we look at the um, market size for the UK, again, in 2021, there was 224,000 units of glucagon sold. And Tetris Pharma have achieved um, premium pricing um, and reimbursement for a gluo of £73 per unit, so £73 um, per pen. So if we multiply this again by the numbers of units in 2021, that gives you a market opportunity in the UK alone of around £16 um, million. Pounds. And here there's no other ready to use glucagon um, available for patients. So we see a real opportunity here to um, gain market share within the UK um, market. And now, of course, as part of um, Aracor Therapeutics, and we've raised um, the funds and the 4 million working capital to support the rollout of the Gluo, we'd expect to see now in the second half of this year and certainly going into next year, an acceleration um, in the uptake and um, prescriptions of the Gluo as it's more actively marketed and as it um, gains formulary positions 
on the um, main centres, the main diabetes centres across the UK. And now if we just hone into a little bit more detail across um, Europe here and to talk a little bit around um, the market opportunity here. So um, what you're looking at at the left um, is the um, expected um, ready to use glucagon um, pricing um, here that will be used as a guide for a gluo. Now, of course, in the UK, the pricing and reimbursement has been achieved. £73 per unit has been converted to to euros um, here within this table. And the strategy now moving forward would be to target launch in key um, European um, territories here. And as you can see, particularly those territories where that um, premium part pricing can be achieved. And Tetris Pharma again, are very well advanced there in terms of their applications for pricing, reimbursement and launch preparations. And again, we expect to now accelerate those moving forward um, post um, the acquisition. And in terms of um, targeting and patient populations here, what you can see on the right hand side is really that cascade. And it's really starting with those patients that are most at risk of um, severe hypoglycemia. And um, so um, pediatrics, so children living with diabetes, hypo unaware patients, for example, moving through to type one diabetic patients and type two. So really will be a focus there on um, product awareness across key opinion leaders and um, prescribers, patient groups, et cetera, within that rollout plan. So again, if we, we look at a, a relatively high level of upcoming milestones here. So, you know, the Tetris Pharma team have made great strides um, to date since licensing the product from um, Tetra, um, Zerus Pharmaceuticals last year. They've obviously received that premium pricing and reimbursement approval in the UK, £73 per pen. That's compared to £11.52 for the lie-off lice kit. Um, and Glue has been made available. And now we're seeing that acceleration of that launch across Europe, which we see as a, a key market, given there's no other ready to use glucagon available. And now looking forward, really targeting those key launches across EU territories. And then, as we mentioned earlier, the, the, in addition, the nine UK licensing and distribution agreements for niche um, products here, which really have leveraged the existing expertise and sales infrastructure. And we're leveraging that now and Tetris Tom will be leveraging that for the um, rollout of the Gluo. And they also make a positive um, revenue contribution to the business. So I'm now going to hand over to Susan, who's going to talk a little bit more about the um, financials. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so the just really starting with the, the acquisition and the consideration. The acquisition includes initial and deferred consideration, which is paid in our course shares, and there is a focus on that performance-based earnout. Tetris Pharma shareholders are the team plus friends and family. So this is not an exit for them, but they view this very much as an opportunity to become part of a growing, self-sustaining biopharma group. So just to note the consideration shares, which are issued at completion and also on achieving those performance conditions are subject to a 24 months lock-in followed by 12, a 12 months orderly market. So Sarah said, you know, we've raised 6 million of which um, 2 million includes settling some historic liabilities, including an initial inventory payment to Zeros to support the Igluo rollout. We've also raised 4 million of working capital which we have modelled and, and it actually gives us a, a line of sight to the Tetris Pharma business, achieving break even and that positive cash flow contribution. So just a little bit more about the deferred consideration. It's a performance based earnout with triggers over three years. The first earnout period is from August 22 to July 23, followed by consecutive 12 month periods ending July 24 and July 25. We've agreed performance conditions which reflect revenue and EBITDA numbers that the Tetris team think are reasonable and will be material to the Aracor group. The first year's targets reflect a business that is investing in the Glua rollout in the first 12 months. So that performance condition reflects modest low million revenues and an expected EBITDA loss. The second year performance condition reflects a step up in the business to double digit million revenues and a transition to a low level profitability. Then the third year performance condition is double digit millions revenue and single digit millions EBITDA. 
And just to give these performance conditions some context, to achieve that third performance condition, the earnout revenues would need to achieve our modelling of that peak market penetration, which is effectively 30% of that 100 million market opportunity, which Sarah talked about earlier, plus reaching that positive EBITDA. So just moving on to talk a little bit, the next two slides really give us um, a little bit more colour about what we mean when we refer to that sales and distribution platform. So starting with some of the milestones that the Tetris Pharma team have achieved um, to date, which reflects building this pan-European sales and distribution platform. Tetris Pharma was established in 2020 and led by Shafiq Chudhari, the CEO, who will continue to lead the business post-completion as part of the Arico Group. Shafiq has assembled an experienced team of regulatory, manufacturing, supply chain, and pharma product sales and marketing expertise. And that team secured new agreements and quick succession to generate sales. And that is part of the, um, the nine sales and distribution agreements, which Sarah talked about earlier. And then in quarter three, 21, they secured the UK and um, U European license supply and distribution agreement for a glue with Zeros Pharmaceuticals. And they started the process to launch um, a glue in the UK, whilst also planning that European rollout. Then in 2022, we've had the first Aglua sales at the end of quarter one, and the team have set up packaging and pre-wholesale agreements to support the European launch. They also set up offices in the Netherlands in May to support that European launch. So just talking a little bit about what we refer to as that sales and distribution platform. Um, so Shafiq and the team use a very capital efficient model to manage outsourced warehousing, logistics and that contract sales organisation. They have an agreement with the Phoenix Group, who provides supply chain and logistics services in 26 countries across Europe. And in the UK, they've established agreements with Maudsley, AAH and Alliance. So I appreciate this is a slightly busy side, but starting at the left with Tetris Pharma, the order is placed with Xerus. And then Zero is shipped to Sharp in the Netherlands and Sharp carry out the secondary packaging according to country specific requirements. And then the final packaged product will be shipped to the pre wholesaler Brokosef in the Netherlands and Brokosef are part of the Phoenix family. The wholesalers will place the order and the pre wholesaler will pick, pack, ship and then bill the wholesalers in those different countries. So Tetris Pharma send one invoice per month to Maudsley's for the UK. And as we roll out in Europe, they will send one to Brokosef for the European um, territories. So the country specific wholesaler receives orders from hospitals or retail pharmacies and then ships. So Tetris orders from Xerus and Aglua was delivered straight to Sharp in the Netherlands. So Tetris don't need to receive the product or warehouse it and they work with Sharp to ensure that regulatory compliance. So really just a little bit more about the enlarged Arico group and how Tetris Pharma will, will slot into the, um, into the Arico group. So post completion, Tetris Pharma will continue to be led by Shafiq and managed by his team. It will be an autonomous trading subsidiary of Arico Therapeutics PLC and their focus will be on sales, marketing, logistics and distribution in the UK and EAA. Arico Limited will continue to be our R&D and proprietary products engine of the group. These two entities will overlap. Shafiq will join the Arico leadership team, but they will operate independently of each other. From a governance perspective, they will be controlled by the Arico board. They will adopt our corporate policies and procedures. And so Shafiq will have authority to incur expenditure and I will have close financial oversight. And just to end by saying at a group level, we control funds in Arco Therapeutics PLC, and then we allocate working capital to the subsidiaries via intercompany interest bearing loans. So just picking up on some key financials um, of Tetris Pharma to date, this is focused on the unaudited six months to 30 June 2022. Sales were just under 600,000 with the first sales from um, the glue at the end of March. So as you'll see, those Nine AM sales and distribution agreements provide quite a strong foundation. And as part of our modeling, what we have assumed is that they will provide between one to two million of revenue per annum. But the focus is very much on that rollout of a glue because that is what we are requiring and that is our focused use of proceeds. So you will see the loss after tax for the first half 
reflects a ramp up of costs um, and the team became employees at the start of 22. And as I said, in May, they established the company in the Netherlands as the European hub. Just to say that included in the first half are about 0.5 million of non-recurring costs. And at a run rate level, the largest fixed cost is the team, which is circa 1.2 million. And as we've described, there is a very um, capital efficient, flexible outsourced model in, as part of the sales and distribution platform. So assets include production equipment in the UK and some investment in the Netherlands packaging line. That inventory of 1.7 million includes 1.1 million of initial global inventory. And um, in liabilities include shareholder loans, which were effectively settled as part of consideration paid at completion. Thanks, um, Susan. So uh, really just to round off today, I hope we've given you a, a good insight and an overview into Tetris Pharma and the, the rationale here for the acquisition and really how we see this as a next step and, and building towards um, our ambition to build a large self-sustaining biopharmaceutical company. So uh, that concludes the um, presentation for today, but we're very happy to um, take questions. Sarah, Susan, that's great. And thank you very much indeed for your presentation this morning. If I may, I will just bring back up your cameras. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions just by using the Q&A tab that's situated on the right hand corner of your screen. Uh, but just while the team takes a few moments to uh, review those questions that were submitted already, I would like to remind you that a recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A can be accessed via your investor dashboard. Sarah, Susan, as you can see, we have received a number of questions throughout today's presentation presentation so may I take the opportunity to thank all those investors for their engagement this morning and if I may just hand back to you both just to run through that Q&A tab and where appropriate to do so if you could please just read out the questions and give your response and then I'll pick up from you at the end thank you Perfect. Thank you. And um, so I'll just read um, the questions out and then between Susan and I, we can answer these. So the first question is Ozilin and Tetris's generic portfolio aren't mentioned in your proposed acquisition RNS. Is this because you consider that these products represent an immaterial um, part of the deal? So perhaps, Susan, you'd like to answer that one. Uh, yes, certainly. And I think I probably hopefully touched on it in my presentation. Our focus and our use of proceeds is to accelerate the rollout of Gluo and in the UK and Europe, which in turn will trigger those performance based consideration. As I said, those nine existing agreements provide a foundation for Tetris Pharma. And in our working capital modelling, we've mod uh, modelled a contribution of one to two million revenues per annum. So they provide a positive contribution, but, are, but not a main focus. We will consider other sales and distribution agreements if they make sense, but just to say that would be an upside to the working capital modelling that we've done as part of this acquisition. Thanks, Susan. Um, so the next question is, did Aracor approach Tetris first or did Tetris approach Aracor um, first regarding the acquisition? Um, yeah, so Elizabeth's background on this. So um, Aracor and Tetris um, Pharma had been known to each other for about a year prior to this acquisition in terms of building a relationship um, with that common interest really across the specialty hospital franchise. So our core, of course, with our products within um, development that we are planning to take to a high value inflection point um, and closer to market. And of course, with Tetris Pharma building out that expertise and sales, marketing and distribution infrastructure. So um, you know, we're building a network and relationship there, as we do with with many um, pharmaceutical companies there. And, and then, you know, simply the opportunity arose here. That was this discussion around there was a really good fit here with um, that cross flow across diabetes and um, the specialty hospital space. And of course, then as part of the enlarged group, really being able to accelerate that mission and vision that both companies have to build that large self-sustaining um, biopharmaceutical company. So the next question is, following your recent acquisition, have you locked in the key personnel? Again, perhaps, Susan, you'd like to touch on this because it's all linked in as well to how we approach, um, you know, our core employees being um, shareholders as well. Yeah. Um, so I would say uh, that, as I mentioned earlier, that the Tetris Pharma shareholders are effectively employees and family and friends. And so as part of this acquisition, that team 
of employee shareholders will be joining um, the, the enlarged group and joining ARACO, and they will be the team that are effectively pushing forward on those earn-out um, con performance conditions to receive those additional consideration shares. So I think in that respect, they are focused and locked in in terms of delivering. Uh, as Sarah said as well, just to, you know, to echo the point that the team uh, really want to be part of growing a larger company and so this allows them to focus on what they are do what they do best which is that sales and marketing and distribution becoming part of a larger group means that they can tuck in and Sarah and I obviously we have that in existing infrastructure at a corporate level which means that they can focus on the things that they really enjoy and the things that they want to do um, I think just touching again Sarah mentioned you know our philosophy at, at our core we have a long-standing history of providing share options to our employees we have an EMI scheme and we have many employee shareholders at our core and that is something that we will continue doing as part of that enlarged group and final point as you would expect under a sales and purchase agreement there are commitments that um, those selling shareholders and those employees have given in terms of non-compete so I think we've got it broadly covered in lots of different different ways great thanks Susan um, so the next question is a few years back Aracor's lead in-house development product was an improved um, glucagon product for diabetes using Aristat technology. This was deprioritized to enable you to focus on the insulin developments. Now you've acquired um, Tetris Pharma and Gluo. Will you now revive that in-house development project to produce an improved a Gluo? Yeah, I mean, that's right, actually. Aracor did, and this is why we know this product so well, actually. We know, you know, we understand that there's um, a patient need here and that a ready to use pen is a good option for that patient population in this emergency situation. And also that um, we'd expect there to then be a market, an opportunity to gain market share. So, you know, for Aracor, we did work on um, glucagon a number of years ago um, now, looking at developing a stable liquid, ready to use version of, of glucagon. We um, did put that program on hold, ultimately terminated that program. And one of the main reasons reasons actually for this was that um, we um, through analysis felt that we would miss the commercial window of opportunity for this um, product because there were competitors um, that were further ahead than us and of course it probably doesn't take any prizes to guess that that you know main competitor there was um, Xeris Pharmaceuticals so again we've known Xeris um, Biopharma for, for many years um, there and have followed their, their progress. So it's really come a full circle now with the licensing of the Gluo product. Um, I think the short answer to will we revive our in-house development is no. And the reason for that is that Gluo is a great product. It is a stable liquid, ready to use, injectable in an auto injector. So you know, there's very little, if any, room for improvement um, for this um, product. So our focus will be very much um, with the Tetris Pharma team now, you know, rolling this out, building the awareness of the product and, you know, its, its benefits here and really working together as a, a team there, focusing on that rollout of a gluo, which, as we mentioned, um, we believe can bring significant upside potential and acceleration for the group in terms of revenue generation. And then the next question, um, which I will hand over to you, Susan, is when you were in negotiations to buy Tetris Pharma, what were the main valuation parameters you used um, for the company when determining the price for the acquisition? Um, okay, <laughs> so I'd say as always, this is a, a commercial negotiation in terms of valuation. You've seen, you know, Sarah has presented, you know, the rationale for putting these companies together, um, for, sorry, for acquiring um, Tetris and making this enlarged group. So I think that it's, it's very clear that there was value added across several different um, parts of our, of our group and our vision and our, our mission as a business. And in respect of the negotiations with the sellers, what I would say is that they had invested um, uh, in the order, they'd invested through equity and they'd invested um, through shareholder loans, which were being converted into equity. And so that initial upfront consideration of, of 2 million effectively in, in our core shares reflects the investment that they have made to date. And so the main valuation parameter is really about that earn out and growing the business because it very much, as, as you've heard, is that that 
key in, sort of inflection point, but still really is at the start point of getting this rolled out. And so that is reflected in the negotiation that we had and also the valuation that we applied. And also, I think the structure of the of the consideration itself, it is very much based on, on that burnout and that performance. Thanks, Susan. Um, so the next question is regarding your Aristat technology platform, what sort of protection will the 20 pending patent applications um, provide to Aracor? Um, yeah, I mean, for Aracor, and as we, we've talked about as well previously, intellectual property protection is absolutely key and core to our business. And we have very broad and robust um, IP protection, both of the Aristat technology platform itself. So these are the ingredients and the excipients that we use to enhance the properties of a broad range of therapeutic products and medicines and um, through to um, IP protection of the, in, the actual products themselves. So within the diabetes space for our insulins, for example, we have um, patent families protecting um, those formulations, including clinical data and the use of those products for patients. So we, we currently have more than 50 granted patents across key um, territories across the US and Europe, for example. And as you mentioned here, pending patent applications, we continue to build strategically and robustly to protect our key inventions and our you know, best in class proprietary products. We've been very successful in um, prosecuting our IP. You might remember from um, our results earlier in the year, we talked about sort of key um, patent protection across polysaccharide vaccines. Um, we routinely um, receive additional grants there. So it really show, we really are experts um, in this area of IP protection and it's core to, to our strategy. So the next question, Susan, um, I'll pass on to you. It's um, please kindly expand on cash flow contribution from a Gluo and how this helps fund the progress of AT247 and AT278. OK, thank you, Sarah. So what I would say is that as Sarah touched on at the very start of this presentation, our strategy for progressing AT247 and AT278 is unchanged. And that strategy was set out at our IPO last year and when we raised those 20 million proceeds. And what you will see from our announcement at the end of June, our cash um, before this uh, placing was 13.7 million. And those funds were, as we set out at our IPO, effectively to fund the progress of AT247 and AT278. So that is unchanged. The proceeds that we are raising for um, Tetris Pharma acquisition is effectively to fund that business to get to the cash flow break even, wash its face, and then into profitability. And we've said, and we've modelled that in effect would be um, generating positive cash flow from probably financial year 2024 onwards. But the main message is that in the short term, our focus on funding 247 and 278 through our value inflection points in 22 and 23 is unchanged. Thank you, Susan. So um, I think that's all of the questions that have been submitted so far, unless anybody has any others they'd like to flag. Sarah, Susan, if I may just jump back in there. Thank you very much indeed for taking the time to address all of those questions that came in from investors uh, this morning. And of course, if there are any further questions that are submitted today, we'll make these available to you immediately after the presentation has ended for you to review. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll publish all those responses where it's appropriate to do so on the Investor Meet company platform. Sarah, perhaps before redirecting those on the call to provide you with their feedback, which I know is particularly important to yourselves and the company, if I could please just ask you for a few closing comments to wrap up with, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. I mean, obviously, as you can see from today, we're really excited about the acquisition of Tetris um, Pharma and them now being part of the enlarged um, Aracor group. We see a real opportunity with their lead diabetes product, Agluo, which we believe is a great product um, with a patient need there and that opportunity for upside potential from revenue generation and also really that strategic optionality now as a combined group for us moving forward across the specialty um, hospital care space as well. And, you know, looking back to, you know, our core therapeutics as well, you know, we've got a number of upcoming key milestones um, that would be good to just cover here. Obviously, we have our interim results in September. So, um, but um, following on from that, um, as I mentioned, we're very much looking forward to um, being able to report headline results 
um, from our three-day insulin pump study, which we're performing in the US in type 1 diabetic patients for AT247. So we see that as a, a key um, inflection point and um, where we're looking to further demonstrate the superiority of that product. And also we'd anticipate um, initiating our next um, clinical study in type two diabetic patients in this case for AT278, which is our concentrated rapid acting insulin. So lots of progress, lots of clinical progress, best in class data, more data to come from our diabetes portfolio as well. And as I mentioned earlier, we'd expect to um, continue to enter into um, value driving partnerships with pharmaceutical companies as well as we have a strong pipeline of opportunities that uh, are under discussion currently. But yeah, so thank you everybody for joining us today and for your um, questions as well. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Sarah, Susan, that's great. And thank you very much indeed for updating investors today. Could I please ask investors not to close this session as you'll now be automatically redirected for the opportunity to provide your feedback in order that the management team can better understand your views and expectations. It's going to take a few moments to complete, but I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Aracor Therapeutics PLC, we would like to thank you for attending today's presentation. That now concludes today's session. So good morning to you all.